Welcome to my kitchen. Our granddaughter Emma is coming to visit this weekend, home from college, and she's asked me to make her some of her favorite chicken tenders to bring back with her. Uh, I'm going to make a combination of tenders and cutlets. Now I could buy them already prepared at the store. Uh, thin cutlets are selling I think for five, six dollars a pound, or I could use these chicken breasts that I bought for a dollar seventy nine on sale and with a couple of cuts I've got my own cutlets. So here we go. You need a very sharp knife to do this. Believe it or not, you're much less likely to cut yourself with a really sharp knife than you are with a dull one. So I'm going to put my hand on top of the cutlet and slice horizontally. Let's see where I'm going here. And there's one that I'll add to some I've already sliced. And I'll make a second cut. And voila, from one chicken breast, I have three cutlets. I finished cutting three of the chicken breasts I had into cutlets, and I'm going to cut the last two into chicken fingers. And these are really quite easy to do. Just cut right down through the breast. These are really handy to have on hand. Apart from kids, adults like them as an hors d'oeuvre, as I'll show you later. They're great to put on top of either a Caesar salad or even a, a regular mixed salad for a light lunch. Anytime you're working with raw poultry, it's really important to keep washing your hands and keeping them really, really clean along with any surfaces that the chicken might have touched. I finished cutting all of the chicken and now I'm ready to start the breading process with my knife that I have cleaned very thoroughly. I've got about a cup and a half of flour. I've got about a teaspoon, maybe a little more of freshly ground black pepper, about a teaspoon of salt, and a good teaspoon of cayenne pepper. If you're going to make these for really young children, you might want to cut back just a little on the pepper, but really not too much. Nobody likes really bland food, including young children. Okay, just make sure this is well blended. And a word about my cutting station here. You can buy an expensive uh, three-tray breading piece of equipment for heaven knows what, or you can do like I do a piece of wax paper for the flour, a tray for the beaten egg, and another uh, piece of wax paper for your breading. In this case, I'm using panko breadcrumbs. Those are those Japanese breadcrumbs that make anything you cook in them really lovely and crispy. They're, ju they're just wonderful. And they're available in the Asian section of most supermarkets. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm ready to start the breading process and I'm going to first dip a cutlet into the seasoned flour, get that coated, shake off the excess, into the eggs. These are three eggs that I've beaten. You can use a fork or a whisk and I'm going to use tongs to turn that and place, whoops, <laughs> slippery devil, place that in the um, the panko breadcrumbs. Turn that. I like to use the tongs because otherwise the breadcrumbs stick to your fingers and you end up having to wash your hands about every other cutlet because you've got so much stuck to them. And I'll just continue with that process. My oil is heating on the stove and I can see that it's shimmering. I'm pretty sure it's hot enough, but just to make sure, I'll toss in a cube of bread. It'll start to bubble. And if it browns in just a minute or so, I know I'm set to go. 
There, it's actually starting to brown up. Yeah, it's browning on the edges, so I'm ready to go and start frying these up. There we go. You never want to overcrowd your pan when you're frying. A, it'll lower the temperature of your fat too much and you'll get a greasy product. So about one more of these. And we'll let them cook for a minute or two until they're well browned on the first side. You can see by the fact these are starting to change color on top that they're just about cooked. So I'll turn them over and let them cook for just a minute or two on the second side. They've turned a lovely golden brown. I've got a cookie sheet lined with several thicknesses of newspaper topped with paper towel. The newspaper really does help to wick away any extra fat. And we'll just take these out and put them on our tray. Incidentally, the pan I'm using, the brand is Swiss Diamond. It's not a Teflon coat, but it is a non-stick. And one of the lovely features of it is you can use metal utensils. And we'll just let these drain a bit. Now that these have drained, I'm going to place them on this wire rack to let them cool completely. Because I'm going to pack these up and freeze them for our granddaughter to take back to school with her. You'll follow the exact same procedure for the larger cutlets. A serving suggestion is just to serve these um, lovely fried tenders with some honey mustard.